Hello you tank junkies, it's Matmus here with you today. I appreciate you stopping by and watching today's video. So today we are talking about tank suspension and this particular subject was brought up to me by a follower of my channel and I guess he's doing some sort of essay for his schooling and he decided to ask my opinion on tank suspension and in particular the hydrogas suspension unit and its advantages and disadvantages over other various armoured fighting vehicle suspensions that are out there. Now I thought this would be an interesting topic to discuss because obviously in my British Army career primarily I was in the tank trade with mechanical uh, repair and such and suspension was something that I worked on a lot guys I mean suspension fails very often on all sorts of vehicles from the Challenger 2 to the CBRT to the Warrior etc etc and it would be an interesting topic to discuss so today's video is basically going to be going over how hydro gas suspension works and other kinds of various suspension systems that have come into play and are still being utilized today and kind of how they work and it's going to hopefully help one of my followers actually help do his essay because he wanted my opinion on it I thought you know what this would be an interesting topic now what you're looking at right now and you're probably wondering Matmus what the hell are we looking at a Mark IV tank for? Well guys this is the Mark IV, beautiful Mark IV tank of the First World War and it is driving through the streets of London and this is just absolutely beautiful it brings a tear to my eye seeing this beautiful beast roll through the streets of uh, you know my capital of my home country but uh, I just thought I'd put this in there because it really does annotate the fact of how primitive suspension was back in those days and when I mean primitive I mean non-existent this vehicle has no suspension, guys. It is solid steel on steel. We're talking about two tracks rolling on bushings to a steel frame. Nothing else to it. And that's kind of worrying um, because I feel so sorry for the poor bastards who used to have to be in these things, crossing huge tank trenches and tank ditches and such and slamming into that terrain when they went over them. It just must have been awful being inside those damn things. Of course, the other technicalities that come with being inside it, but. But there is no suspension, and it's interesting to see how much suspension has progressed. Now, this isn't going to be a history lesson, guys. We're not going to go over the, you know, the progression of suspension on armored fighting vehicles because that's a whole new topic. But what I want to primarily focus on is hydrogas suspension units and torsional bar suspension units because these are both prevalent to my military career and what I've worked on. First of all, let's talk about the hydrogas or hydro pneumatic suspension system that is used on pretty much most main battle tanks of today. In this particular instance for the Challenger 2, it is the hydrogas suspension system. As you can see, it's working beautifully here right now, keeping that tank nice and stabilized. First of all, let's talk about the pros of the hydrogas suspension system. Now, each variant of tank out in the round of the world have their own variants and their own designs of different types of hydro pneumatic suspension system. For the Challenger 2, the Hydrogas, I would say, is absolutely fantastic, being able to keep this vehicle going off terrain very, very well. So let's talk about some pros then. Well, obviously the Challenger 2 is there to kill other tanks, it's its primary focus, and to be able to create a nice stable platform for that gun to fire on is what that suspension is really trying to do. And the gyros can only do so much. If this vehicle was given poor suspension, the gun would not be tracking us as beautifully as it is right now. So all six stations of this vehicle are utilizing the hydro pneumatic or hydro gas suspension system, and they are all tuned to different gas settings. Now, first of all, let's talk a little bit about the hydro gas suspension system and how it works before we go ahead and talk about some more pros of this system. So hydro gas, guys, is pretty much exactly what it says. It's liquid versus gas. And in each bottle that is attached to the hydro gas system, it is trying to fight against those road wheels pushing up against them when it crosses rough terrain like this incline the Challenger 2 is hitting right now. Now, each station has their own various pressure settings. Obviously, station 1 and 2 is going to take the majority of pressure inside that bottle. When the liquid and the air are trying to push against one another, it makes a nice solid cushion for the tank to work along when it's going across terrain. The rear station at number 6 is actually quite highly pressured too in case to go into the reverse. But what's another pro of having this system? Well, it's modular, which basically means guys it's quite simple to take these systems on and off. It's basically remove the road wheels, get the arm in, up in the air and then unplug it. It's simple as that, a few bolts and out she comes. Now these units are quite big so you do require a crane or some very very strong craftsmen slash tradesmen to pull it off there. However, it's quite easy to do. It's not a very difficult task, and it's nice and you know easy to swap on and off, which is great for battle damage repair. Battle damage repair, guys, basically means if the vehicle is hit, it can easily be repaired and moved back onto the battlefield if needed. It also means that if the vehicle is hit, it can basically continue operating without having to worry about it being immobile. 
And for me, the final pro, guys, is ride comfort. We're talking about a crew here, guys, and basically, human beings like being comfortable. Yes, we're in the military and we're supposed to be able to, you know, deal with all the tough hardships of being in combat and such. But when you're rolling along in a vehicle like this, especially with tracks and, you know, heavy weighted vehicles, it's nice to have a platform that is stable and comfortable to drive in. I must admit, being inside these vehicles, they do drive and ride very, very smoothly with these systems in place. And it's just really nice to have that suspension being able to give you a nice, smooth, comfortable ride. So, let's talk about some disadvantages of a hydropneumatic or hydrogas suspension system. Now, I do know in my previous military career, I've had ups and downs with these systems. Most of the time, I'd say probably about 90% of the time, these systems work flawlessly. The hydrogases are so good at keeping these tanks going that we very rarely change them out. Majority of the time when they did get changed, it was because the seals inside them would fail. That's purely because they're not being driven correctly. New drivers would jump into these vehicles and think they are invincible. They know the reliability and the effectiveness of these suspension systems, and they think they can traverse any terrain at any speed. It's just clearly not the case, guys, and unfortunately that's normally how these systems fail. Drivers are not trained correctly or are not utilizing the skills they've been taught to take these vehicles across terrain safely without damaging components. And that is pretty much the number one con I find with these systems is overconfidence. Yes, they work very, very well, but you have to know your limits, and unfortunately drivers just get overconfident with them and aren't trained correctly. With other systems like Torsional Bar, you tend to realize when something's gone wrong when you hear a very large THUD and then you know a torsional bar snapped. With a hydrogas suspension system, you don't know until you park up and all of a sudden you notice your vehicle is sagging to one side. Now, normally one or two suspension systems will fail for hydrogas at a time. One station and two station are normally the ones that fail primarily because they are the ones taking most of the brunt. So there's our first con. The second con is, well, what happens when we have to replace these systems? Well, it's quite simple to do if you have a good crew. Unfortunately, though, it's not as simple as just taking the bolts off and removing this, you know, this system. Like most suspension systems, you need to either split the track, you may need to uh, remove certain components to get access to it, whether it would be bar armor or side skirt armor and such. And it takes time, and the more time that the tank is off the training area or off the battlefield, it's going to take time off, you know, to the commander's intent. With a hydrogas suspension system, as I said before, it's modular, but it does require a few extra things to be able to get it back on the road. With hydrogas, you require nitrogen, or basically gas to be placed into the system to create that gas and liquid suspension property. Now, that is inherently kind of annoying if you're a repair crew because you need to bring gas bottles with you or have them in stores to be able to charge these systems. That, my friends, gets very, very annoying having to cart around gigantic battleship grey gas bottles in the back of your vehicle or having to go and knock on the storeman's truck to go and find one. It's really, really annoying and very, very impractical to be carrying gas bottles around with you if you're in a first line repair unit. Also, there's another piece of equipment that's in quite inherently important when working on hydrogas suspension unit, and that is the charging unit to actually be able to pressurize these systems. And they are very finicky. Now, they are very finicky in the Challenger 2's particular case, and I'm not too sure about other tanks around the world. And if you do have a system that you've worked on on other vehicles around the world, please, in the comments section, let me know. But for the Challenger 2, it's called the Punk. And it's basically a system that charges the gas system up to allow it to have the correct pressure at each station. Guys, those systems always failed, and that's a number of reasons why. First of all, bad training. New crew members who use these systems, don't know how to pressurize the hydrogas, and they fuck up the charging unit. So when a new crew comes along to take it along, it doesn't work. This is a huge con, because basically, you're inherently trying to make a system work on three things. A good crew, gas bottles, and a gigantic punk charging unit, which is about the size of a small generator. These are bulky, annoying instances that have to be put on the repair crew, and it just slows things down. It's not as simple as you think as just taking it off as a modular property. There are other things you've got to think about. So that's the second con. The final con for me, guys, is price. These units aren't exactly cheap. Compared to torsional bar systems, which are basically pressed steel in a bar form, we're talking about a sealed unit that comprises of gases, oils, the arm itself, 
different seals, castings, the bottle, it all adds up and for 12 units if a lot of them fail it's a lot of money and comparatively expensive to the torsional bar system. However let's be honest here guys we all know that modern main battle tanks are now stepping away from torsional bar systems which we'll talk about a little bit in a second here but they're very effective at doing their job and I'm really happy to see that Challenger 2 is still utilizing these systems and most modern day battle tanks around the world are utilizing these systems because they work. They work very well at being able to make that nice stable platform and keep the tanks rolling off road and cross country very nicely. So now let's talk a little bit about torsional bar suspension. Torsion bar suspension is nothing really new, it has been around for quite some time, however it's still used this day, and you're probably wondering, well why is it not just given hydrogas suspension and replaced? Well guys, there's a number of reasons, but really it is still being used today, and it is very effective in being able to give good suspension to heavy armoured fighting vehicles. Torsion bar suspension basically works on the principle that a steel bar is preloaded in a wrong direction to allow the road wheels to be pressed constantly towards the ground. This in turn is making a nice bouncy spring, however it's not the same kind of spring as you're thinking of in a coiled fashion, it is basically the bar is pre-tensioned and being able to create pressure on opposite sides of the tank. One end of the torsion bar is located attached to the hull and the other is attached to the road wheel arm which is can create that suspension system. Very very simple guys, nothing really too special about it. Which brings me on to my first pro guys, it is cheap and it is simple. They are two key attributes that would be nice to have when producing these kind of tanks. Something that is simple to replace, simple to produce and fairly cheap. A pro also for these kind of systems is they are quite reliable. I must admit guys, if you know how to drive these vehicles correctly, torsional bars will not fail on you. It's normally when a driver or a crew has not paid attention to how the vehicle handles and the terrain it goes across, once again creating too much strain for these kinds of systems and shearing them. Another pro for this system, it is basically a very simple change to do on the vehicle. If you need to check the suspension, it is a crowbar shoved under the road wheels and lifted up. Now this is a good benefit over hydrogas suspension, because with hydrogas, you may still have a leak on the bottle, and there may be limited pressure in that station, but you won't get that, you know, lift of the road wheel to say that it's failed, because there's still enough pressure to push back. With a torsional bar system, if a torsion bar is sheared or failed, when you put your crowbar under the idler wheel or that road wheel, it is going to move up, which is going to indicate you have a failed torsion bar. Normally you'll also see your vehicle sag, but that's just something you've got to pay attention for. That's a really nice feature to have because it's instant diagnosis. I don't need to go and get the punk, I don't need to go and get a pressure gauge to stick it onto the system. I can literally tell my driver or another one of my crew members, hey boys, get the crowbar, stick it under that road wheel, give it a couple of up and down and if it moves we're gonna to have to change the torsion bar. Really nice and simple to do. However, torsional bar does have its disadvantages too. Torsional bar is once again very reliant on the driver's skill. If you don't know how to utilize your vehicle correctly with this kind of suspension system, you will snap the torsion bars and create quite the problem for your crew and the repair crew coming to fix it. With the hydrogas suspension unit, it tends to be a lot more dependent on what kind of pressures are set for the vehicle before it sets off. Torsional bar is also quite dependent on that. You can actually set the torsion bars on different spline settings for different weight classes of your vehicle and for different terrains that you're going across. With this being said though, if the crew is inexperienced as to what setting to put that spline on, you may be over tensioning the torsional bar and potentially shearing it. Overall though guys, the torsional bar is still utilized in a lot of infantry fighting vehicles. This is because torsional bar takes up very little space inside the vehicle. In an infantry fighting vehicle, there isn't much room when you have a full crew of guys inside. Also, hydrogas suspension units are quite heavy, and we don't want to create extra weight onto the vehicle if not necessary. Torsional bar is literally slip under the underside of the hull, and off you go. So guys, there you have it, my comparisons from torsional bar to hydropneumatic suspension systems. Overall guys, I will always rely on hydropneumatic for the most part because it is just more a reliable and stable platform to place such a heavy vehicle on. That's not saying torsional bar systems are not effective and are not able to be used in this role, 
It's just technology has advanced to the point where hydrogen pneumatic suspension is really superseding torsional bar. Now, I actually prefer working on hydro gas than torsional bar for the fact that torsional bar can be a bit of a pain in the ass trying to get the uh, torsion bar out if it shears. There's been times where I've actually had to uh, get a welding team to cut one out. We've had to actually remove the power pack and actually get access to the whole compartment to cut a torsional bar out, which was pretty brutal. Let me know what your thoughts are, guys. What do you think are any more pros and cons of either of the two systems? It'd be really interesting to hear, and I'm sure my follower who is doing his essay would really like to hear too. Guys, I have a bit of a challenge for you. At some point during this video, a hydrogas suspension unit has failed on a Challenge 2 main battle tank. It is within the footage of this video somewhere. What I'd like you to do, and I challenge you to do, is to look for which part of the video that hydrogas suspension unit has failed in. I want you to tell me what side of the vehicle it is and what road wheel station it's on and how you can tell that particular hydrogas system has failed. So in the comments section below let me know of that information and potentially I may select someone to be a prize winner. Maybe it's going to be the first one who comes up with the answer, maybe it'll be a random draw from the people who have selected the correct answer. I don't know yet, but it could be an interesting, uh, interesting gift that I may send. Anyway guys, I really do appreciate you stopping by today and watching today's video. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. And if I have made any mistakes, once again, please feel free to correct me. I appreciate you stopping by today. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe. Please also share the video guys, it would be most appreciated. And as always, please slap that like button. I hope you have a fantastic day. Stay tuned for a lot more Armored Fighting Vehicle footage in the future. All the best and bye bye.